Namaste everyone. I took a longer time than I thought I would make the next video. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> been earning around like crazy. Okay, so today I'm going to today I'm going to answer a, a few questions about um, Mala about the uh, this big bead hundred and ninth bead. Uh, many there are many questions um, about uh, this uh, the importance of this bead and uh, how to handle it. And there is uh, someone asked uh, uh, that uh, they have a Mala with the hundred and ninth bead. Is that okay to use it? And uh, some other questions are about uh, how we treat this uh, extra bead in a mala. Okay. Uh, to simply answer that question is the uh, this one is the marker um, like uh, the beginning and end of a mala of a chanting of a circle. Okay. So that is uh, normally it comes as like a big one. But many malas, I have a few other malas have the same bead, but with the two nodes either side just to separate that. So when we reach there, that reminds, okay, we have completed uh, one round of a mala. That is the simplest answer. But for a bhakti yogi, bhakti yoga means uh, the yoga of devotion, of prayer, uh, like we in the church or in the temple that um, um, someone practicing the devotional yoga, surrendering and... Uh, having um, uh, a god or a, a guru and we just follow as the guru or the god suggest through the text or through the through the teachings and for them for the bhakti yogis uh, this is it has more significance it's more spiritual meaning uh, to this one uh, to an extent i would suggest that everyone take a bit of a bhakti yoga it's not i'm telling that you have to be religious uh, no it's nothing religious because um, uh, when you take a, a spiritual practice in a religious way it can make us blind <laughs> okay so the i wouldn't i wouldn't say that you need to be a religious person to spiritually grow uh, instead that you have to understand why each practice is suggested uh, in whether it in, in the Quran or in the in Bible or uh, in Bhagavad Gita or any spiritual books, uh, we have the intelligence. Human beings are given the intelligence to think about it and to understand. It is not to be blindly. It is not out of fear. Fear is not uh, something uh, good in the spiritual path. And the spirituality is not about being fearful. It is about overcoming all kind of fears. Okay, so do not take anything out of fear. Because there is nothing uh, bigger than you. The big you exists out there and there is no God exists outside of this temple. Your body is your temple and there is nothing uh, higher than that. And our quest, our, uh, our uh, hard work is to find, to come face to face with that God. That is our intention, to come to face uh, with the, the inner Guru. So that is our intention of practicing any kind of um, uh, spiritual uh, paths. Okay, any 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 walk. You know, all the roads leads to the same goal. We say they're wrong, but to the same same truth, and that truth is within us. Okay, so what is the significance of this uh, big bead, the Guru bead? It is called the Guru bead or Sumeru, and uh, what is the significance? The, when we take the mala for chanting, it uh, reminds us our ultimate goal. It helps us to set a purpose, an intention of our practice. Okay, so the guru represents what the word guru means is that that removes the darkness. Guru means that or who. Uh, removes the darkness of ignorance and uh, uh, bring us to the light of knowledge and uh, to the level of purest state of consciousness. Purest state of consciousness. Okay, Anyone can be a teacher. Our parents, our friends, our spouse, uh, our children, uh, any children, anyone, a stranger can be a teacher. 
you know, the uh, three-year-old left me, my daughter, she reveals me so many beautiful, simple truths about life every now and then. You know, so we all learn from each other. So in a sense, this three-year-old uh, Lakshmi is a guru. Okay, so uh, here, when we practice, when we take a um, spiritual path, as, as it is mentioned before, our goal is to come across, come face to face, come encounter the Guru that is uh, dormant within us. So when we see that Guru, when we uh, receive the guidance from that Guru, we say that we are in the path of enlightenment. Okay, so this bead for the Bhakti Yogi is, is the representation of Guru or higher consciousness or God, whatever you, you call it, or supreme uh, state of mind, or whatever you call it, it represents, it reminds us. And we, each round, we start at the lotus feet of the Guru, each round, and every round we come and finish at the lotus feet of the Guru. Okay, and when we reach there, you know, our mind has the tendency, when we achieve something, when we complete um, a particular task in life, our mind can feel a temporary uh, um, pride. Okay, so it's uh, the Guru bit reminds us to eradicate all kind of um, false prides and be humble. Be humble. Completing a round is not the uh, intention uh, of our practice. It's just a, a means to elevate our mind to a higher state of living. Okay, so be humble and uh, it reminds us the attitude to cultivate the attitude of humility that is one aspect okay so then it is asked uh, why uh, we shouldn't uh, jump over uh, the guru beat uh, jump over from here we don't continue like that it is one reason before we didn't have a big one in many malas they come to the same seat uh, same beat with uh, two notes either side. So if you go unconsciously chanting, that is a uh, you know, tendency the mind keep on uh, thinking something else and we chant. We can just carry it over. We you forget the counting. So that is uh, that is one reason that we it says don't to jump over. But for a bhakti yogi, for a devotional person, it is the matter of respect. You know, in India when we were children. Uh, something disturbed uh, in the middle. Okay, so when we were children uh, in the school um, or oh, uh, at home, when we are, we were taught uh, to give an uh, um, absolute respect to the teachers. And at home, we were taught that uh, you know, uh, after after the parents in our life, the most influential people are the teachers, and they should be respected even before the God. So it is said that Mada, Pida, Guru, Devam. That is how my uh, my father used to tell me. First, you know, in our life, the first person in our life to be respected is our mother. And the second person is the father. And the third person is the teacher or the teachers. The Guru, uh, the, the, uh, the God, if you believe in a God, that God comes only after the teacher, only after the parents and the uh, teacher, the, uh, the God has um, uh, uh, influence in our, in our life. So the uh, God receives the respect, our respect only after uh, the teacher. And I remember my wife, she's a school teacher and uh, uh, her students still, even after 20, 25 years, uh, they send her uh, lovely messages how much they love and how much respect they have to her. She had a, a few short spells in some international schools in Spain when she moved here and uh, it was kind of shock for her but how the kids, the children uh, treat their uh, uh, or approach their teachers. Not everyone, not everyone, but majority, especially in these private schools in our it's, uh, uh, people coming with, of course, with a very good financial situation and they are given everything they need. Once it happened, 
you know, when they are in the library or in the place, they don't care uh, how who is there, the teacher or whatever. They don't respect the place. The library is supposed to be silent, but they come and they do all kind of uh, games. And they for of their, you know, this um, uh, teenage things. Okay, so once there was a meeting, uh, the parents. It was a parents' meeting, and uh, a parent uh, brought uh, their. Uh, a daughter 14 year old daughter to the meeting i don't understand why first of all they brought her second why the school or the uh, head of the school let the child uh, let the uh, um, uh, the girl come into the meeting because it was parents meeting in the meeting in front of all the parents and in front of all other teachers uh, this girl started to shout and uh, harass um, on, a, on a teacher she's so gentle she's a very a soft soul but she started to speak about her personal life and attacking on her because this teacher um, uh, insisted her about something, homework or something like that, you know. And the teacher started to cry. And I didn't, no one interfered that. And the headmistress, or oh, headmistress, uh, head, head of the school, I don't remember it is, uh, okay. So uh, the head of the school didn't say anything uh, against that. I don't know if they, this, this parent is quite influential about, uh, among other Mm, uh, parents and I don't understand what kind of message what uh, they are teaching their children uh, about I know this uh, teacher personally I know her because uh, uh, we met in yoga classes and um, uh, we talk uh, each other a lot she's such a lovely soul okay so uh, this kind of attitude of the children in the school was quite shocking for my wife uh, because she never seen that uh, in her life and you know all the children are you know when, when a teacher comes into the classroom we all stand up and we wish i think it is the same here in the in the many schools they are but uh, she she doesn't see that here you know people children stay there uh, some people, children just stay, uh, sit on the desk on top of the table and they don't even move until the teacher says you know in in india it doesn't happen okay what i'm trying to say is uh, will these children or will we not get any information and knowledge if we do not respect the teachers? Of course we will get. Definitely we will get. But there is a difference. We call the, you know, the it. we develop um, a kind of artificial intelligence. Our brain is super memory. It has a super memory power. It can remember whatever we study. If you decided to go on, that's fine. But the true knowledge, the knowledge from our instinct, the knowledge from our intuition, to have that pure knowledge, we need a certain level of humility, arrogance and um, egoistic attitude will create blockages in the flow of knowledge naturally from us. They can make a be a good manager and controller and uh, they can gain all the knowledge, but the creativity and the true knowledge about life, it is not learned. It comes from within. For that, we have to clear the shields and we have to take off all kind of that egoistic and blocking uh, kind of personality out of our life. So that is the one uh, reason that it keeps us reminding that our goal, the importance of purity of our consciousness, purity of thinking, and uh, that keeps us, that helps us to grow faster and deeper. Okay, so that is our, uh, uh, the spiritual aspect of having a guru bead in a mala. I think I have uh, talked to uh, a lot about this uh, uh, Guru Bin and uh, you know big um, why uh, the people has to cross over or uh, repeat another round um, because uh, uh, be depend on the temperament psychology um, or uh, psychological functionality of each student's mind the Guru tell okay you have to repeat three rounds a day or three rounds in the morning, three rounds in the evening, or five rounds, or two rounds, or one round. If you are a strong person, if your mind is strong enough, and it has purified enough, 
you may be uh, suggested just one round why uh, one reason is that we were telling many reasons a uh, 108 beats 100 um, repetition is to elevate the mind from the samsaras from the talkative uh, state of mind to the quietness and the last eight beats for the for eight chakras to purify and to enlighten each chakras we say eight chakras because we all mostly we heard about seven chakras but um, the eight chakras uh, including the bindu we have one uh, small bindu here representing the moon uh, that helps us the jump connecting from the uh, third eye center to the crown chakra so that includes the bindu also includes so eight chakras to purify eight chakras we have eight um, beads okay for some people, 100 repetition is not enough. Some people need 1,000 repetition for the mind to be quiet and calm. Some people need 10,000 repetitions. Okay, so it's different on all our uh, state of mind. Uh, then once the mind reaches to that absolute quietness, we go through chakra by chakra. Okay, so if you are intent to do one more round or more rounds, how we can go, how we can change uh, continue with the mala without jumping over is just changing the direction simply changing the direction like that okay how how we do that is once we reach there the 108 beat you know we have the index finger closed we are supporting with these three fingers these three fingers is uh, important to have close together because they represent the three gunas three uh, qualities of the nature three qualities of the body three qualities of the mind three qualities of food um, I think I will explain about the three qualities uh, later uh, and the tamasic rajasic and sattvic nature of the mind uh, not only everything in the world everything in the nature has the three qualities okay it is to find the harmony in between uh, all these three qualities uh, in another video um, I will explain that okay so we hold like that and we complete the 108 then what we do you just bring the thumb insert and bring the pads together and you support the mala with the thumb then you bring the three out then you hold the last bead of the last round and then you just flip it over now you have the last bead as the first bead for the next round then you continue like that okay you just bring it so here you just bring the thumb inside support and you take it with the middle finger you flip it over and then you continue so that is how you change the direction of the mala and uh, if you are uh, interested in uh, knowing if you are uh, intent to practice uh, more uh, like a thousand repetition and uh, eight uh, chakra healing then we need to use another technique um, when i sit for a longer chanting if i have to do more rounds uh, instead of using a mala i use fingers both fingers to count uh, in the next video i will explain how to use the fingers and uh, it has a good effect to the entire body as well i will explain in the next video okay i think it is um, for now it is enough I think you have enough knowledge um, about the Guru Beat now. And if you have any questions, please um, uh, comment in the comment session. And I will go by and um, I will try to come very more often, not taking too long. Okay, uh, have a lovely, lovely journey on your spiritual path. If you have any questions about your spiritual practice, about your meditation, about your uh, yoga practices, uh, please uh, leave a comment as a question and then I will try to if I understand and if I have the answer I will uh, try to uh, make a video on it and if I don't have the answer I will think about it I will meditate it and I if I when I get the answer I will come to you okay uh, take care and uh, have a beautiful journey beautiful life ahead love you namaste